This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There we go. Now we've got Joe's board right there. I like it. All right. How you doing, my man? How you uh, how you doing on this uh, beautiful afternoon? Doing well, Big O. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure, my man. Talk to me. It, it for you when you are watching this awkward relationship with the franchise and the quarterback. What goes through your mind because it it can't be. It, 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 it can't be really nice what's going – Tua can say all the right things, but in his mind, he's got to be incredibly pissed about how, how all of this has, you know, broken down. You know, there are certain things about the Dolphins organization that sometimes are unusual or unique. Um, in this case – I mean, it appears as though the Dolphins are the only team in on Deshaun Watson, but that's really not their fault. It's because Deshaun Watson is saying, I only want to play for the Miami Dolphins. So I don't really blame them for engaging the Houston Texans on the trade front. Uh, you know, I think they have a responsibility to do that. Deshaun Watson has the second best passer rating of any quarterback in NFL history in his career behind only Patrick Mahomes. So if you, if you have a chance to get the guy who's ranked second all-time in passing, uh, quarterback passer rating, you have a responsibility to explore that. So, you know, we can criticize the Dolphins for a lot of things, uh, but this is a business, and there are going to be times where players and coaches are put in uncomfortable situations. It is uncomfortable, but we'll all know on Tuesday – if it is true that Tua is the Dolphins quarterback for the rest of the season, and that will relieve some of the pressure. Not to mention, hey, does anybody else go? Does Xavier Howard go? Does Devontae Parker go? Does Preston Williams go? Does Byron Jones go? I mean, they could trade anybody, right? Not just Deshaun. No, I'm, I'm with you there now. Joe, let me ask you something. If Miami's the only team, and this is where he wants to go, why, why the hurry then? Why are you hurried to get him onto a, a bad roster, pay half a season for a quarterback that you're really going to put at risk more than anything else um, since there's real no threat of anybody taking him from you? Why not just wait for the offseason? That way you wait for everything to take its course in court, and then you also know what the NFL will do which, in a way, if you're only negotiating with yourself, it could actually drive the price down if there's a suspension next year for a certain amount of games. Now you're paying a higher price without having any information and having all the risk. Why not wait till the offseason when all the risk is maybe gone at that point and all the information is out? Yeah, I mean, that would be an ideal situation that Deshaun Watson isn't traded anywhere and the Dolphins have the ability to determine if Tonga Vailoa is better than you and I think and better than they probably think at this time. Maybe his progress accelerates at a rate beyond anyone's expectations. I mean, that's certainly possible. Then the Dolphins wouldn't need to acquire Watson or perhaps Tua would have played so well that Houston would suddenly – have a change of heart and want him included in the, in the trade. But things do change. If the Dolphins go 2-15, and 15, does that change Deshaun Watson's opinion about whether or not Miami is the place he actually wants to be? That is Dude, a potential if, risk. If 1-6 hasn't, if this mess hasn't with the offensive coordinators, with, with no offensive line coach, if this hasn't convinced them that this is not the place to come, I don't think one in 15 convinces him. By the, the way, Dolphins, we, are talking, we are talking about the guy that actually thought it was a good idea being Deshaun Watson and calling strange women to come over and rub his dingling. Like he thought that was going to end really nicely. Yeah, it was going to end with more than a happy ending. So, you know, this is not a very, this is not the brightest bulb in the chandelier. Let me just say that. I don't know how smart or not smart. Deshaun Watson is. Obviously, it seems he made a bad decision 
maybe at some point we'll learn more about why he made that decision and if he has some sort of problems he needs to work through. But yeah, they, back they, to all, they, all, they all have a sex addiction, Joe. Yes, oh. that's coming next. Yes, all these guys that cheat and all these guys that do, well, uh, you know, I have a sex addiction problem. Let me tell you something. Every male pretty much on earth has a sex addiction problem because that's all we think about. So go ahead. All right, I'm listen, sorry. you asked me about the Watson situation and why not yes. wait. Let's just say that the Panthers and the Eagles really have backed off at this time. You would definitely be competing with more teams next offseason. Who knows? The Giants, the Steelers, the Washington football, whatever. So no, no, uh, um, the Dolphins uh, are all about left. My boy out in the, in the West Coast uh, for uh, the Broncos. Um, what's his name, dude? The young guy that's on the beat. Um, oh, damn it. He and I go back and forth on crypto a lot. He reported that the Broncos are out because of the legal issues. So if the legal issues get resolved, then you are you are you're a thousand percent right, Joe. They would probably get back in the mix. And the Dolphins have rolled the dice uh, a lot in free agency and the draft over the last three or four years, and they've come up craps. They do not often roll a seven or an eleven, right? So. With Deshaun Watson, at least you know what the player is. I mean, this is you know the yeah. caliber of player that you're getting. And you know, I still think that um, well, you know, I wrote a column in the Palm Beach Post today about how this tells you a lot, the fact that they're allowing the Dolphins to have their name continue to be associated with Watson. What does that tell you? It tells you a lot of things. It tells you how much they respect Watson's talents. Greer and Flores and Ross. It tells you that they're obviously not sold on Tua Tonga Valoa. And it tells you that they're in all likelihood willing to take whatever PR hit comes with adding him, which, as I mentioned in my column, will diffuse very quickly after he throws five touchdowns. Right or wrong, that's the culture we live in. You said one thing that uh, I found interesting. Um, that, you know, he could maybe all of a sudden turn around and start to play great football and better than even some of us imagine all that. But even if that happens, this is, this is not a relationship that's repairable, right? I mean, I would imagine that by now Tua is like, okay, I can't wait to get traded and get the hell out of here. And I would imagine that Lee Steinberg's doing everything in his power to keep his mouth shut and not explode on the Dolphins. Like he has let some stuff out of the bag in the past already about Tua. I would imagine he's a little pissed, right? This is this is a relationship that's pretty much over, correct? I don't know that I would say that. I mean, any relationship is repairable. There are people who were at the divorce table ready to sign the papers and they changed their mind at the last minute. I mean, Tua desperately wanted to be in South Florida. His agent engineered in large part, you know, this, this happening tank for Tua happened Tua in Miami happened, you know, Tua wanted to be at a rebuilding franchise. He wanted to live in South Florida. Uh, he liked the idea of, you know, joining an organization that he believed was headed in the right direction. So I'm sure this is all a bit jarring for him. He's still a very young man. We forget how young he is, but he, I think also understands the, the business side of things. Uh, you know, if the Palm beach post has an opportunity to hire uh, a very successful, very accomplished, you know, the second greatest sports journalist uh, of all time, I'm sure that they would throw me overboard and I would say, well, all right, I get it. You hired a guy that's much better than me. That's uh, that'll never happen, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> they, can't get, they can't get rid of you. By the way, Ben Albright. Thank you, Gus, for um, 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 reminding me. It's Ben. Ben does an excellent job out there uh, covering the, uh, the Broncos. All right, Joe. So you, I, I don't know how much conversations you've had with other players off the record, those kind of things. How much has their behavior, do you think, hurt him as a leader in that locker room? Well, the first thing I think of is that he wasn't voted a captain. Now, there's a lot of details about whether he wanted to be a captain, 
you know, things that we're not exactly sure every detail of that. But um, I think that I think the players support him. I think the players support him because he's their leader. You know, you love the one you're with. If Deshaun comes, they'll love Deshaun. And they'll talk about how they don't know anything about the off the field stuff. All, all they're going to do is judge him on how he is in the locker room and how he is on the field, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't think Tua is, you know, disliked or disrespected like some other quarterbacks we've seen come through. Do you, um, in your eyes, have they – have they created the environment they need for him to succeed on the field and off the field? Well, he's got how, you know how, how badly did the Dolphins miss on on creating that environment here? In your, I mean, they drafted his wide receiver Jalen Waddle. They signed a wide receiver Will Fuller. They drafted high picks: uh, left tackle, right tackle, right guard, left guard. I mean, they spent all. They tried to build the to a wall. Now the two wall is missing a few bricks, but they, you know, they tried to create an offense. <laughs> they tried to create an offense that suited his skill set. You can argue what, whether or not it was a mistake to promote dual offensive coordinators and then have the quarterbacks coach actually call the plays reportedly. Uh, but it, it's not as though they didn't want to make this work. And again, I'm not suggesting that there's no chance it will. By the way, how come we haven't cornered Flo like Len Martez and Dave Hyde cornered Saban into saying, I'm not going to be the Alabama coach? How come we haven't cornered him to that point in these press conferences and, and put it, why not say you're not trading for Watson and that you that Tua is the guy from here on out? Why not make that that open? Because you guys asked Tua that question, but we're not asking Flo that question. We're kind of dancing around. We have a disagreement it. about this. We we're allowing him to dance around that. We have a disagreement about this. The first thing is that, in my opinion, Brian Flores' message about the Deshaun Watson trade scenario is going to be consistent. That it's a rumor that it's hypothetical, that he's not going to talk about rumors and hypotheticals, that he supports Tua, that Tua is his quarterback. That is the message. There is zero chance he will ever say anything else. Now, no, 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 no. But you can you can still corner him and say he's not, not going to say, say we're not trading for Deshaun Watson because there's okay, still a so, chance so they then, might. So then say you are committed to Tua long term. Not Tua is our quarterback right now. Tua is our guy. No, no, he no. He doesn't no. look when That's, we ask we questions. Have not, we, have, we haven't really cornered him that way, like we journalism did is not about cornering a person, or Orlando. Journalism no? is not about cornering a person. That's not the objective. That's not the goal. No, the, the goal. objective is to get the the objective is to get an honest answer out of him well, not a number misleading one answer. what's the best number one what's the best way to get an honest honest answer from someone okay it's when the tape recorders aren't on and the video cameras aren't on of all right number one that's when you get yes. the honest answer you if the right. dolphins wanted to honestly share with us that they were out on deshaun watson they would they would they have not so they are not yeah no i, I we Look, totally we, we, we look. I I understand that there's this notion out there that we haven't been hard enough on flow, and I hear it. And we as journalists have talked about it. We respect the opinion. All right, we all try to do the best we can. Sometimes we do better at time, you know, better than at other times. Uh, uh, that's why I'm saying that we we did it to Saban when Lenny Martez and and Dave Hyde did it. They they kind of teamed up and kind of left him in a corner where he had and to he say. And he lied. And he and lied. He lied. And he I lied. don't think exactly. Flo I, – I hope Flo wouldn't lie. Flo, I think, is smart enough not to lie. He's not right. going to say we are not trading for Deshaun Watson if there's a chance that they will. So what do you want him to do? You want him to lie? No, I, I just want to corner him. So you just him want him to say, where, yeah, there's a chance we're going to trade for Deshaun Watson. No, 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 no. What no, coach no, or GM no, no, no. would say no, that, that about part, a player on someone else's roster? 
that part you're a thousand percent right he's not going to say but the other side of it you can say why haven't you made a public commitment that Tua is your guy for from here on out I'm for, worried for about today's practice I'm worried that about you are looking game. forward to building this team around Tua for years to come They've and then that. I want to hear and then I want to hear him say no he won't say no you have not asked him in that sense you have not asked him he he has been saying it in the moment not in the long right. term. So listen, why don't you come? So why don't you come on Monday's Dolphins video teleconference and ask the way you okay. would like it asked? I, I would do that, but then I'm going to look like a complete dick because I'm never there, and all of a sudden I'm coming in to just ask him the hardest question in the book at the moment. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah, it's not going to be a really comfortable situation. You know what I'm saying? I'll do it. You know, Joe. You know me. It's not like I won't do it, okay? You know that. You've been around me long enough. It don't matter to me if it's Pat Riley, if it's Jimmy Johnson. It doesn't. I don't. It's not about not asking the hard in. questions. When okay. you ask a question, you want to a be fair and b take into consideration what your objective is and what the possible responses are. You don't just throw out any question. No, but it's not just throwing out any question. Because he's kind of danced around it. That's all. We've kind of allowed him to dance around it. That's all I'm saying. We did not allow Saban to dance around it. I'm just, just and saying. It just, and he'll and he always lied. be remembered. And, and I think. And I think. And I think if you ask him that question about Tua, he'll say, "Look," and he'll avoid it. And then that's it, right there. Listen. And you have your. Even though Brian we already Ford, have. Our Brian answer Flores technical. volunteered earlier this year. Something along the lines of write it down. We don't want to trade X. Yes, he volunteered he did. that. Yes, he did. If he wants to say that about if he wanted to say that about Tua, he already would have. And great point. Thank you. Great point. Great point. Great this point. is not a dumb guy. Brian Flores is a smart guy. Why? I didn't, I didn't say he's a dumb no, guy. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is if he wanted to say it, he would have said it. He's been given numerous opportunities. Yeah. Uh, he's not a dumb guy. He's done a really shitty job of coaching this year, but he's not a dumb guy. There's no doubt about that. I'm, I'll say that. I'm not going to ask you for a prediction because, you know, I'm not going to insult you that much. 30 to 16. <laughs> no. Oh, it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. Uh, Low of 46, uh, you know, could be worse. Are you going? Yeah, man, I go to every game. Okay, all right. No, I don't know if they're going to send you to Buffalo. I don't know, you know. No, I that go might to every be a game. Favor they, that might be a favor they do. Like the Mad Dog would say, when I go to Buffalo, I want a room without a view. You know, I mean, that's just, you know. I mean, they, they don't like you too much in the Palm Beach Post over there if they're sending you to Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? Although you're probably in Toronto the entire time. Is that what you're no, doing, Joe? No, I'll stay in Buffalo. The um, It counterbalances Las Vegas, Tampa, London, New York, Boston. That is Look, the people of true. Buffalo are That's very true. nice people. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's no doubt. It's just a oh, – I got God, myself just... into trouble once. I made a joke about Tulsa, Oklahoma. I was doing oh. college football live on ESPN, and they're like, oh, oh you, you got a sideline assignment. I'm like, yeah, but it's in Tulsa. I said that on the air, and then I was like, oh, man. I got... <laughs> When I got there, they all they were so mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are nice people, but it's just a doom, gloomy place, man. Oh, I remember God, if it was Troy, did. Alabama, or Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was one or the other. Either one. You know, I'm sure there's not a lot to do there. Follow him on Twitter as Shad Joe. More importantly, do the, do me a favor. Subscribe to the Palm Beach Post and support the man and all the great people that work at the Palm Beach Post. It's super cheap. It's a joke. So do it. And you'll get the insider stuff that they produce, too, on top of all of that. So it's always good stuff. Joe, love you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate the time. We'll uh, catch up on Sunday. I look, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on Monday's Brian Flores teleconference, video teleconference. You know it. All right. Later. Be good. I would ask him. I don't. I don't have a. Is it, oh, there we go. I don't have a problem asking him, but it's it's not a good look for me to just show up and bombard him with one like <laughs> brutal ass question. <laughs>